to you twice now it's done to you twice now it's this new feature on the stream yard i gotta i gotta take it off keep looping on you keep looping on you it's all good it's all good we're here in the tigers avenue friday night edition ahead of the auburn lsu baseball series and boy oh boy is there lots to talk about tonight um and we're really excited about tonight uh to uh, not, uh, not only discuss what's been transpiring with um LSU women's basketball and their recruiting. Uh, We're super excited to talk about, obviously, Auburn in this series. Um, Pretty important one. I think it's more important than we realize. Uh, And also, we're we're pretty pumped about having Gary Reedus on uh, tonight. I mean, a huge piece in the LSU women's basketball staff. Um, Really excited about having him on tonight. Uh, and hearing some stuff from the inside of the staff. Uh, so y'all be ready for that. We're, we're, me and Zach obviously have some questions for him. Uh, so if you want to ask him a question, be sure to go ahead and shoot it in there, and we'll make sure to to star it, and uh, uh, hopefully we can get to it later when, when Gary is on. So we appreciate y'all joining in. Um, Zach, I don't know if you can tell or not, I am a little nasally and, and snotty and sneezy, so I apologize. Uh, I may have to mute my mic to sneeze every now and then. Uh, oh, the wow. pollen here in Arkansas is is, <laughs> is full full go here. You know, you wake up in the morning and you sit you you sit in the car, you, you get in the driver's seat of your car, and your hood just has a film of yellow on it. Um, it's that time of the year. Hard. You said what? I said it's that time of the year. It's that time of year. So I apologize for my nasally sounding voice, and I, I might have to sneeze every now and then. Also. Uh, appreciate you, Zach, uh, taking over uh, all on your on your, on your own uh, Monday. Uh, Mama wasn't feeling too well, uh, so I had to take care of the babies. And also, I was in the middle of my finals here at school, so I had to study on top of uh, um, taking on the dad duties alone because Mama wasn't feeling too well. So I appreciate you uh, taking it on by yourself. Uh, but I'm no super pumped to be back. I always want to be here and love discussing LSU. So I hate to miss, but I'm glad I'm back because tonight is going to be awesome uh, having Gary on. And obviously we got some things to discuss surrounding Gary and what he has done lately. Yeah. Um, so Zach, midweek, real quick, Tigers take care of business. Never go to Hammond, Louisiana again. <laughs> I was extremely disappointed. Uh, that way I did not get to watch that game because the entire semester I have had to do Greek homework in the middle of the LSU game. And so I haven't been able to really fully enjoy and watch a midweek game, which maybe not too the too bad of a thing considering the, the previous two weeks. But this was going to be the first midweek in a while. I was going to just get to sit there on a Tuesday night with nothing to do. I was done with my finals on Tuesday And I could sit there and watch an LSU game because it was the last day of school and it was going to be great. (laughs) Hammond, whatever goes on down there in Hammond, I mean, they can't even get a stream going. I I mean, one (laughs) camera, something. Jeez. So I listened to the infamous Chris Blair uh, call the game. Tigers take care of business. It was good. I enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Chris Blair is awesome. Um. They run rule ten to nothing, which is really great news for your bullpen. Uh, the yeah. the kind of approach for um, the midweek is just limit as much as possible. Get guys in there, get them innings, 
and the 10-run rule really helped with that. Kind of reserve your bullpen for this weekend. So the Tigers take care of business in Hammond. But, Zach, the last two weeks, you've lost your midweek game, Mm -hmm. but you swept. So I wouldn't have been upset if we lost the game. (laughs) Because maybe it would have been a little foreshadowing, but hopefully Are we can a little four-oh. superstitious, Reagan. No, 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 no. Maybe a little, maybe a little, maybe a little. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, anyways, they take care of business. Hopefully, we can still sweep this weekend. So, Zach, LSU's headed to the Plains. Uh, it's a little rainier uh, this morning in Auburn. Uh, tonight, it should just be cloudy, no problems. Uh, and then the next two days are going to be gorgeous. Uh, in Auburn, Alabama, so no no problems in terms of weather. Um, should be a good series. What is your thoughts uh, heading into this weekend, Zach? Obviously, last night, big news, not only for Alabama's head coach, because holy cow, uh, we won't get into the details of that, but he's gone, as you all probably <laughs> know. <laughs> but Alabama, in the wake of this news, Mm-hmm. Goes out and beats Vanderbilt in the first game of the series, eleven to two. Yeah, it was pretty crazy, and it's wild. huge. Why, Zach? Tell them why and, and your thoughts on uh, going into this weekend. Why? Well, obviously, now you sit at uh, first overall in the SEC, yes. not just in the SEC West. You are first overall in the SEC now. Um, so it's massive going in this weekend because you want to take care of business this weekend. Yeah. Uh, and ob- obviously it is a lesser opponent, but this is a team who is just coming off of probably one of the su- most surprising weekends of SEC baseball No, question. Uh, no question. as they took two of three from South Carolina and just about swept them on Sunday. It took yeah. a South Carolina comeback and they ended up winning it by one run uh, to avoid the sweep from Auburn. Uh, and Auburn was on the road at South Carolina. <laughs> Um, so, you know, it's massive, uh, for them to be able to kind of get a confidence boost coming into the series. Obviously they're going to be playing their best, uh, with, uh, LSU coming to town, the number one team in the country, they're going to want to play up, uh, to their full potential. And they're going to want to, uh, try and repeat some of what they did last weekend, uh, and, and have a surprise upset. And obviously they're also competing, you know, potentially for, uh, postseason seeding. Uh, okay. So, you know, they're, they're battling right now. And I, as you, as we discussed, I believe it was yesterday or a couple of days ago, yep. um, they are going to be pitching backwards this weekend. Yep. So they are, they are trying their best to get a win out of this series. Uh, oh, obviously, as, as I've said before, no team just concedes a game. Um, but you took out your best arm. <laughs> and moved him back a day, uh, allowing Paul Skeens to be Paul Skeens. And and you and obviously Auburn is going to hope that their lineup is able to get to him and their bullpen, uh, their their uh, their number two, is able to kind of hold up there a little bit better than he has in the past. Because I, I believe, if I remember correctly from uh, Musso's at the, uh, at the Box podcast, I think the longest that this guy that's pitching tonight has gone is – a three and a third or three and two thirds or something like that. Like he really hasn't extended very long. So, you know, you're going to expect to see him get out of the game pretty early um, unless he's just, you know, unless he's just on, but we're going to have to wait and see how that plays out tonight. So, you know, them trying pinching backwards this weekend is very interesting. They're obviously going to try to steal one or potentially two. So this, this weekend's huge for LSU. Uh, you, you want to be able to hold on to that number one spot, the number one seating in the SEC. Obviously, you still have a couple weekends after this to go. Um, but for me, Reagan, as we have continually stated uh, time and time again, get to, win to, win the, win the weekend, Absolutely. win the series. That's what's the most important thing. Don't don't worry about uh, sweeping. Don't try to make it your main focus. They just need to worry about winning win too. And when you have Paul on the mound tonight, you know, I feel pretty confident in this weekend. I'm very interested to see um, how Gavin does this weekend. He had a phenomenal game on Tuesday night. Yes. I, I, I believe he had three hits on, uh, on the night. Uh, he got hit by pitch, which, yep. by the way, Reagan, I don't know how many games. I think it's like at least four games in a row he's been hit by a pitch. He obviously leads the team uh, on HBP. I think he is 
I think he's fourth, like in the nation. Yeah, he's top five. Uh, he might be top three now. Hit by pitch. The yeah. weekend he's had. So like, maybe he, you know, you watch <laughs> out. He might get hit by another one tonight. He's on like four games now straight. In the head last pitch. Sunday. I mean, geez. Yeah, I, man. So it's scary. Uh, but you know, I want to see how Gavin does. I mean, obviously, it was good to see him have the production that he did on Tuesday night. No, no I want to see that replicated tonight against a uh, better opponent in, in Auburn. So, because I feel I really feel like he's struggled since the injury, and to see him uh, maybe build some more confidence up and get back to somewhat of a hundred percent health and, and looking back to normal form, I would love to see that for the Tigers. Uh, other than that, I mean, the offense just needs to keep doing what they're doing. Uh, Dad talked. I mean, Dad, we, we mentioned you know some things that Dad says uh, here and there on the on the podcast. Dad said today, you know. A lot of times this season, because of the bullpen uh, struggling, you've had to out-hit teams. Um, you, you you might have to do that this weekend. So if the offense continues to do what they've been doing, which is to out-hit teams, uh, I'm fully confident in LSU taking the series this weekend. Yeah, and I, I, that's pretty much – I mean, I, I, feel, I feel like we feel very similar about the approach to the weekend. Um, Chase Alsup is his name, by the way, uh, tonight. Um, this guy, he he hasn't extended, and 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 Musso's right, um, but the dude can throw it a hundred miles an hour. Um, yeah, he has no decision. His ERA is not pretty. It's seven point six two. Um, it's seven point I think six seven in conference play, so not very good. He's got thirty one strikeouts in in a little over twenty six innings of work. Here's the problem with Alsop. 23 walks is his problem. He, he he has a command issue. Um, he can throw it 100 miles an hour, but his command is a problem. Uh, so a patient approach tonight should be the scouting report. Um, like we don't need to just be sitting dead red fastball first pitch. Uh, we need to be looking to, to take our base because this guy gives a lot of them. So patient approach tonight is, is what I want to see. Uh, from the Tigers, and that'll be a real key to success tonight. Uh, if you're if you have a patient approach, you'll probably get to this guy very early. And if you put a guy, a lot of guys on base for LSU, typically it doesn't go very well for the other team. Um, yeah. Obviously, Paul Skeens is just going to shove tonight. Um, I think the idea behind um, putting Tommy Vale, their ace, tomorrow is like hoping maybe they can you know, catch Paul Skeens on an off night, get him out of there and and maybe steal one. And then you're set up to win tomorrow with Tommy Vale um, as your ace. Um, But you're, you were absolutely on the button, Zach, when you said they're they're trying to get one. Uh, Taking one out of this series for Auburn is a win um, because they're a bubble team right now in terms of uh, the postseason. They got like a 36 RPI um, their conference record, I believe, is nine and eleven. Um, so they're one of those teams that are like, you know, w- right there on the edge. And if they can get one win against LSU, um, that's going to be huge for them in terms of their resume. Um, so almost maybe conceding tonight's game um, in and trying to get one tomorrow. But the reality is, look. Vale is a is, is a good pitcher and he is their ace. Um his ERA is his ERA is 38, 3.8, 3.8, um, and he's got a 4-1 record. Um, so it's it's a better ERA than 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 Floyd's. Floyd has a better record, he's six and oh. Um, but the, he's also the the one thing that I wanted to point out is he is also a left-handed pitcher, and so He's one of the better left-handed pitchers in the SEC, but he's not Hunter Holland or Hagen Smith. So let's not get up in arms about him being a left-handed pitcher tomorrow, their ace of their staff. And also, Zach, I don't know if you saw this from Demui. Uh, He probably mentioned in his podcast because I think that's what he said he was going to do. But he tweeted a while back that that in-conference play, LSU is actually hitting .001 better against left-handed pitchers than right-handed pitchers. Yeah. So uh, I, I think the the left-handed pitcher issue was heightened 
in the blowout of game one against Arkansas with Hunter Holland and Hagen Smith, which it really wasn't even a blowout. It just got blown out in one inning, in extra innings. Yeah. Um, but as you've played, you, you've seen that, like, that's just Hunter Holland and Hagen Smith, who are two guys who are probably going to get drafted this year pretty high. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so don't be intimidated by Tommy Vell coming in tomorrow pitching from the South Paul side. Um, Zach, tomorrow, or, or excuse me, game three, Sunday, man, they, they don't have a number three. Like, like our little, our number three is like, you know, with Christian Little has been somewhat of a rotation. Christian Little has settled into that, uh, uh, you know, the past few weeks and has pitched okay. Um, he had the one great outing against Ole Miss. Um, but Christian, her, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing this right, but it's, it's, Herber Holes is their third guy. He All has right. not won a game yet. He's 0-3. He's got a 4.69 ERA. Uh, they don't really have a game three guy uh, to, to lean on to go take a rubber match. Um, so if this goes to a rubber match, you really like LSU's chances. You know, if their plan works out with Tommy Vale taking game two, um, you like LSU's chances in the rubber match a lot. Um in terms of what I want to see this weekend, uh, Malazzo is back in the lineup tonight. I know they had been putting Travinsky out there. Um, not that Malazzo has been injured or out for any time, but I, I, I'm really glad to see Malazzo in there because I want to continue to see his uh, uh, bat progress. Yeah. Um, because man, he's been hitting so well this week, this this year. Excuse me, not this weekend. Um, and I want to see more of that. I want. I want. He's to, hitting some clutch spots as well. Absolutely. I mean, he. We were nine to nine Sunday against Alabama, mm-hmm. and he drove in the tenth run to take the lead. Yep. And, and that was right before the catcher got hit in the neck. He was. He was the guy who drove in that run to make it ten to nine. Um. So yeah, he's he's been clutch. He's batting like, geez, I think it's like three sixty something. Um. Obviously, he doesn't hit for power, but. Man, if he comes in and gets you a base hit at the bottom of the lineup and, and he has a better approach or, and gets walked, I mean, geez, I you can't ask for much more out of him with the defense that he has. I mean, he's batting 360 something, turning the lineup over, driving runs in, getting hits. Uh, I I love it. I absolutely love it. And I'm really excited for him because I think he's making himself a lot of money being able to hit uh um more consistently now. Uh, because he's gonna be a draft pick. Um, in the near future, uh, solely because of his defense, and now that he's hitting, you know he may raise his draft stock uh, pretty high. Um, so I'm pretty excited for him. Um, needless to say, Zach, um, it's at Auburn. They're pitching backwards. How do you think it plays out? Do we get the sweep? Do we go two one? Do we lose the series? How 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 do you think it shakes out this weekend? Uh, I, I do think they win the series. I'm not going to say they sweep. Um, I would love to see them sweep. That would be awesome, especially if you go on the road. Um, I'm very interested tonight uh, because I obviously each weekend it's gonna, this is going to be the topic. You know, how, how, how far do the starters extend in order to preserve the bullpen, which has been spotty uh, at times this season. So one of the biggest things that's been talked about is Paul Skeen's pitch count. Is he able – uh, to keep the pitch count lower. We know what he's going to be able to do. We know he's going to go out there and shove. We know he's going to strike out double digits. Yeah, uh, He's going to have double-digit strikeouts. Um, we know he's going to do, for the major- majority of the game, he's going to shut down uh, the, the entire lineup. How quickly does he have to exit the game, though, because of that? So I'm very interested to see how the pitch count is tonight. Something that Musso mentioned on his podcast, Alabama is very good at the plate. They're very disciplined at the plate. Yeah. And so that's why you saw him have to exit as early as he did. Auburn, not as much. They're one of the teams uh, that strikes out the most in the SEC. So maybe tonight, um, because of that, if they are not as disciplined as Alabama was and other teams have been in the past, maybe he's able to extend and get to se- get through seven. Maybe, you know, come out there in the eighth. We'll see what happens. Um, but again, as I mentioned uh, two podcasts ago, I would. Lo- that's the one thing I would love to see uh, on Friday nights uh, on Game One in these weekend series is Paul Skeen's 
be able to expend just a little bit more. And I know, again, that's being picky, right? That's yeah. like, uh, <laughs> you know, that, it's being extremely picky. But yeah. I would love to see him, you know, maybe get us. Uh, because you, you've seen where kind of Griffin Heron's limit is, right? <clears throat> because yeah. Paul had to exit so early, uh, yeah. and, and, you know, Griffin became gas there at the end of game one against Bama, and they were able to hit on him some, and his command wasn't as there as, as well. So if he can, if Paul can get us through seven, it's going to even more so do a better job to set up for Griffin yeah. uh, to be able to not pitch as much himself um, and to be able to uh, really just only have to worry about bringing those two guys in uh, for game one. So that's another storyline to be following tonight specifically. Yeah, one last thing, Zach, and then we'll get to a few comments and, and take a break. Uh, we may we may get out of here a little bit earlier tonight, uh, seeing as the game is starting at 6 o'clock, but we'll, we'll see how it plays out. We're not going to rush to end the show, but, but we may end just a little bit early tonight uh, after we get done with Gary. Um, but one more thing, Zach, Chase Shores made it official a while back that, you know, he was officially done, uh, for the year Garrett Edwards. Um, I, I don't know if he announced it on his social media, but I know that Leah Van had, had made that somewhat official. Uh, the word was still a little bit out on that, you know, whether that was, you know, maybe he could work back, maybe not, but it, it's a done deal that he did. He did tear his UCL. So it's going to be a Tommy John, you know, he's done for the year, which really stinks because easily your best bullpen guy this year. Um, and But you haven't had him since the South Carolina series, and you still managed pretty well. Uh, now you're on the back half of your SEC schedule that is definitely a lot lighter. Uh, so maybe, you know, maybe the scheduling gods kind of helped you out there. But uh, – you know we've we've managed. I hate I hate that that Garrett is gone, but um, we we will continue to keep an eye on the bullpen because we need these guys to uh, uh, step up with these injuries uh, that have been crucial uh, to the bullpen. All right, Zach, let's catch a few comments. I see you starring some of them in here, so let's get to a few comments and then we'll hit a quick break. Then we'll come back and we'll talk about today's biggest news. Yeah, so uh, Robert, who's been uh, kind of a uh, one of our usuals here. Uh, appreciate, recently, you, RP. We appreciate him joining, continuing to join us. He said, "How many home runs y'all think LSU uh, hits over under the short with the short porch and left?" Man, Thompson got one out over the short porch and left the last time we were in Auburn. Jordan Thompson did. Um, I think he was the only one who hit it over the porch out there the last time we were in Auburn. I can't remember though, but I know I know Jordan did it. Um, I expect I'll, to see some home runs this weekend, though. It, it is a shorter field. The well, yeah. the The problem with this is we hit a lot of home runs to right field. I mean, a lot. Yeah, we uh, did. I mean, Tommy White has hit just dang Tommy near. Oppo, He's Dylan hit Oppo. all of them except two uh, that have gone. All but two have gone opposite field. Mm -hmm. You know, Cruz can hit opposite field. A lot of Cruz's goes. A lot of Cruz home runs go center right center or left center his are never really pulled or opposite his are like center left center and, and right center um so i would say the best options to hit one over it would definitely be jared jones uh and maybe jordan thompson can get another one over it uh but i'd be watching to see uh, uh jared jones get one over so let's say in a weekend I i'll say two I say Jared Jones gets two over. I'll say three if Jordan can drive one out. That'd be that'd be. I'd love to see that. So uh, I also uh, Robert also mentioned the baseball lineup has been released. Why don't you go ahead and pull that up because I do want to look at that and um, kind of give our thoughts on that. Uh, Ryan also is in here. He said I'm in the building. Ta fam. Uh, Justin Broussard also in here. He said I'm excited for the baseball team. Uh, but the women's basketball program is on fire. I'm ex I'm super excited to get to uh, discuss that with uh, Coach Gary and and all all of that. It's yeah. gonna be a, a blast. Uh, Doug Nose says, "Happy Paul Skeens Day, gentlemen." I love that. Uh, <laughs> I love that. Every Friday. Every Friday, that. man, it's great. Happy uh, Paul I enjoy it as well. Uh, we got some uh, of the so, comments we starred that we'll get to uh, here, especially in the last segment. So I do have uh, um, the lineup here in front of me, Zach. Um, Dugas. 
Oh man, I, I didn't. I forgot about Dugas. Yeah, he probably could get one out too. So maybe. Well, I, I believe you said Dugas gets two this week. So maybe four okay. or five. Okay. Yeah. I would love well, to see Dugas get one this weekend. Again, I want to see him. I want to see how he does this weekend against um, against the Auburn Tigers and against SEC yeah. competition. So Gavin is is leading off at second. Trey and left. Dylan, Tommy, the usual suspects. Cade, and then in the six hole we got Jordan, Thompson. In the seven hole, Jared Jones. This is the one question I have on this one. Uh, right field, Josh Pearson. Um, and then nine hole, Alex Malazzo. The only one is we've been seeing Paxton Clean get back in. So I was kind of curious with that one. I, I feel like probably tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's my, that's my thing, though, is Joe Bear, I feel like, has been playing really well lately so that right field i think is going to continue to be somewhat of a rotation um maybe you do see paxton clean out there tomorrow i i would like i want to see paxton clean again out there uh, uh this weekend um because man he made you know some great plays out in right field la- last weekend kind of to end the games uh i think he got the start on sunday hit one out uh, to kind of give you those insurance runs. Yep. Um, so pretty excited about him. Uh, since it's a right-handed pitcher tonight, that's why I assume Josh Pearson is out there. I would have figured he would have gone with uh, uh, Joe Bear because he's the bigger bat, kind of been more consistent this year from the left-handed side. But needless, uh, uh, nonetheless, he gave, he gives Josh Pearson the start. Yeah, I'm totally, I'm totally fine with it. Um, I, I mean, obviously, you have a lot of, a lot of options. You have a lavish of riches, so we'll see. I do, I do fully expect uh, Paxton Kling to be in the lineup tomorrow. Uh, excited to see how he does. Uh, maybe, maybe, hopefully, with a full start uh, since the injury. All right, Reagan, let's take a break, and then when we come back, uh, we are going to discuss the big, big news uh, of today as we draw closer to our discussion and interview with Coach Gary. Uh, So if you're in here now, go ahead, like, please like, subscribe, and share. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, If if you haven't liked, please like the video. Please share. We want uh, everyone to see uh, our interview with Coach Gary. We're super excited about it. We'll take a quick break, and then we'll be right back. Five Star Hero, your intro and outro music for the Tigers Avenue show. They ain't ready for that LSU. Go check out all his other music on all the major platforms. Don't forget to follow him on Instagram at Saints Anthem and at Twitter at One Nation Doty. Don't forget to check out his Facebook page for all his Saints and LSU merchandise. Can't get any better than Sarah Klein Stevens, attorney at law. Her firm focuses on the needs of the elderly and maintaining their dignity throughout the process. Here for you, here for your family. Sarah Klein Stevens, attorney at law. Back at it here to discuss the big news of the day. Boy, oh boy. It <laughs> gets sweeter and sweeter. It gets better and better. The Kim Mulkey effect is in full force. Not just the number one, but the number two. Transfer portal players are going to be Tigers. Haley Van Lith and Anissa Morrow. Morrow with the E-A-U-X. Might as well get used to it, Anissa. Yeah, I love it. I love it. E-A-U-X. Morrow, or Moreau, however you say it. Um, Super excited. Nice the Beast. Averaging Zach 25 points and 12 rebounds per game at Almost, DePaul yeah. this last season. Zach, I think it is officially safe to say <laughs> this is a super team. It, it, uh, am I wrong? No, no, you're wrong, not wrong at all. So look, check this out, all right? So Women's Hoops on Twitter, they tweeted this uh, not long ago. Uh, LSU is stacked, exclamation marks. <laughs> All right, Haley Van Lith, Anissa Morrow, Michaela Williams, Flage Johnson, Angel Reese, Alea Del Rosario, Kateri Poole, last year Poa, Samaya Smith, and that's not all of them. 
Uh, yeah, I, dude, we are oh, in a time man. of LSU sports right now uh, where it, it is arguably the best time in LSU sports. Uh, women's ba- basketball is the athletic driving. department as a whole. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, women's basketball right now, thriving. Baseball, number one in the country. Jeez, Football sorry. looks like they're going to be competing potentially uh, as a contender for the national championship. Uh, Matt McMahon is doing a lot of things in the portal to rework this team and get things going in the right direction again. Uh, obviously, gymnastics. I mean, the list goes on and on. Yeah, and the on. gymnastics I mean, just got to the final four on the floor. Yeah, right? the gymnastics with Jake, was with Jay. the national championship. I mean – it has been just an awesome, awesome last couple of years for LSU sports, and it's going to continue. Reagan, just to, to say how massive this is, because I, I still believe, I still believe there's some people out there, some LSU fans out there that have not yet quite hopped on the bandwagon of women's college basketball and watching these LSU Tigers. Um, and I, I'm going to have to ask Coach Gary yeah. about that and, 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 you know, get his opinion and, and mm. have a statement on that. But listen, for those that are listening or that that are going to listen or watching now that maybe you're not as big as, of a women women's college basketball fan as you have been in the past, that's okay. Please, I understand. Please. But you need to recognize and realize – what is happening right now at LSU with women's college basketball? Greatness. Greatness. We're in base, we're in baseball season right now, right? This is the equivalent of what you did in the offseason with baseball. When you yeah. went and got Paul yeah. Skeens and when you went and you got Tommy White and everybody yeah. was losing their mind yep. because of, of the talent that you were bringing in. And not only the talent that you were bringing in, but you were meeting – Crucial needs that were holes in your team. Yeah. This is the, the the exact same thing. This is the equivalent of what you did on the baseball transfer portal front. You went out, and not only did you get the number one and number two transfer uh, portal players in the country, as you did in baseball, you filled massive, massive needs uh, uh, posi- of position. It was It was extremely impressive what they have done on the recruiting front and what they have done in the transfer portal. Um, And the biggest thing for me is you went out and you not only addressed the holes that you had from losing players this past season, but one of the biggest concerns that we talked about Reagan last year was that there was a little bit of a lack of depth there. Right. And obviously they came out and in the national championship game, they kind of proved us, they proved everybody wrong there. Right. And the depth, you know, when you needed it to happen, and it did. When you needed it, when you needed the depth to show up, when you needed the bench to be there, they did. Uh, but for the majority of last season, uh, the depth was a concern. I wouldn't say it was a major. It wasn't a major issue, obviously, because you only lost two games on the season. But it was a little <laughs> bit of a concern. Every day. Now, when you think about the potential lineup that you were going to have, the potential starting five that you're going to have on this team, it's scary because of what you also have behind them, yeah. right? There, There is players that made significant contributions to this team that next year are going to be very crucial depth pieces for this team. Uh, you're bringing in the number one uh, re- uh, recruiting uh, class in the nation. That, you know, before you got these two players out of the transfer portal and before – Coach Gary and Kim Mulkey did what they did in the transfer portal. You know, you're looking at those players going, okay, th- you know, they're going to fill the holes for us. You know, those are going to be the players that step up and, and take on those uh, roles next season. Now you're looking at those players and going, these guys might be potential depth pieces. The number one, arguably the number one player and uh, the number seven overall recruit in, in the country in Alea and obviously Michaela Williams, you know, you're looking at them going out. These guys might be death pieces. These might, guys might be uh, – these girls might be players uh, that are coming off the bench potentially. Um, whereas before you were looking at them going, okay, you know, they're going to come in and they're going to be – start. you know, they're going to be starters. Like Alea Del Rosario is going to come in and fill in Ladesia's spot. Michaela Williams is going to come in and fill Alexis Moore's spot. But you went out and you met 
uh, your your knees. You filled massive holes that you had after the season. And you – listen, Reagan, it, th- there's going to be two teams that are going to be discussed heading into next season as the potential number one overall preseason uh, team in the country, and that's going to be LSU and that's going to be Iowa. Uh, obviously, with Iowa, you know, having Caitlin Clark and, and what sh- who she is and, and the phenomenal player she is and everybody that they're also bringing back. Um, and, you know, I mean, the two teams that just battled it out in the national championship, those are going to be the two teams that everybody in the country is looking at as preseason yeah. number one, that everybody's look, everybody in the country is looking at as, you know, potential uh, potential contenders for the national championship. I mean, make no mistake about it. They are going to contend for a national championship. This is a team – I know it's, Mar- you know, obviously March Madness and, and, and things like that. Things go crazy. Uh, you know, we'll have to see how next year plays out. You also have to think, you know, of what you are – what South Carolina is losing, right? South Carolina was your right. biggest hurdle last year. And, you know, you you did play them, and it didn't go well. Obviously, you're going to see them again next year. Um, so that team is losing a lot of their players, right? LSU, I, I would say, is going to be the favorite to win the SEC next year. Yeah. Um, even with South Carolina and what they have and what they are bringing back, um, what you know? What they are actually bringing back? Um, they're going to be the favorite to win uh, the SEC, and that comes with high X. Ex- you know, so this team uh, two years ago, Reagan. You know, we were saying, man, just you know, have a get a winning record. You know, win more yeah. than nine games. You know, they you know, won win more than nine games, and they won <laughs> what they twenty something, twenty six. They won twenty six. You know, and then then you know you have this year. Um, and, and, and Kim, you know, saying, we just want to get past round one, uh, or round two, we want to get to round two, you know, round three, yeah. we want to win more games than we did last year. Right. Um, and then you go out and you win the whole thing. Right. Yep. So now that you have made these accomplishments and you have reached these goals, um, not only LSU fans, but the national media, uh, and sports fans in general, they're going to have higher expectations so i'm really excited for when we get coach gary on here in just a few minutes uh to discuss with him you know how do they plan to handle that how do they plan to handle those expectations so man it's it's an exciting time for lsu oh man without question um i mean you have what i would consider i think somebody said it in the comments here a fab five i i mean you're bringing back Angel Reese. You're bringing back Flage Johnson. You know, you have pieces like Kateri Poole, Samaya Smith, last year Poa that are coming back as well. And then you bring in Michaela Williams, uh, uh, Del Rosario, um, Angelica, and Janae. And then you go out and you get Haley Van Lith and, and, and Nisa Morrow. I mean, it's, it's special what Kim Mulkey is doing. Um, Quite frankly, it's exactly what we uh, expected her to do. Um, I've been super impressed with this staff, Uh, not just Kim Mulkey, but the staff she has put together um, to do these things, uh, I think has been crucial outside of her um, because I think they have been selfless um, in the way they have conducted themselves. I think they have embraced their, their role as a coaching staff better than I have seen, you know, anywhere at LSU in a long time. Um, Like, they genuinely seem to be thrilled to be on the staff with Kim Mulkey. Like, perfectly fine with being assistant coaches and loving these girls and investing in these girls. Uh, I mean, you see how much Joe Schwartz and and, and, uh, Gary Reedus love to be on the court with them. Uh, and how emotional they are, how passionate they are with the girls. Um, and also to have a piece like Bob Starkey, who easily, easily could be a head coach somewhere. Yeah. Like no problem being a head coach somewhere, but also has zero problem taking the back seat uh, um, to Kim Mulkey and being a, a brilliant assistant coach um, and a crucial piece to this staff. Um, so outside of Kim Mulkey, this staff as a whole 
this staff as a whole has just done a phenomenal job. I've been super impressed with what they've done. Um, and, and they just all seem so selfless in the way that they have conducted themselves. Um, and, and it has been a treat to watch. And, man, year three is going to be something special. It, it's going to be special. So we're looking forward to it. All right, guys. Well, let's take another quick break. And then when we come back, uh, we will be joined by Coach Gary Redis. We'll be back here shortly after this. Make sure you go follow us on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, all at Tigers Avenue for daily updates on the show and all things LSU sports. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to click off and hit that subscribe button at Tigers Avenue. We broadcast all of our shows live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Back at it here in the Tigers Avenue. We really are excited to have Coach Gary Redis. Zach, he told you. <laughs> and you had, did it. Yeah, I had he to ask him. <laughs> I just heard you say Redis, and I'm like, <laughs> how dare you? He we told just you. I know it. I know it. I know it. I, <laughs> I, I, I DM'd and everything. It's like, hey, I, we got to make sure we get this pronunciation right. Like, how you pronounce it? And then right before we go to break, I was like, Red, how I'm dare like, you? <laughs> the fail of a lifetime. No, I'm kidding. I know I'm kidding. it. I know it. I know it. So, Coach, uh, read Coach, it. What do you go by? With do they call you Coach G. Gary? G. Coach, Coach G. 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 All right. Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. They even dropped the coach after a while. I'm not really formal. <laughs> so it's just G. It's just G. G. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, man, we really appreciate you hopping on and, and taking some time out of your day uh, to answer a few questions. Um, man, what a big day for the women's basketball program uh, uh, and for you personally. Uh, I mean, Anissa Morrow uh, announces her commitment to LSU. Um, just to kind of start off the questions, man, what, what does that mean uh, to this program to, to get a girl like that out of the portal? Uh, it, it's big. It's big for for the continued development and for the continued growth of our program. Uh, we've had a lot of success. I mean, yeah, in, in these two years, right? But right. it's just been two years. Like, it's not like we have just years and years and years and years and years of recruiting classes where we can just, you know, Pick the next one. All right, come on. You, you're here now. You, right? It's not like that. And I think right. that's what Coach Mulkey had the luxury of having at Baylor, and that was one of the like really selling things for me to to come here to LSU to be able to kind of jumpstart yeah. and help jumpstart you know the program from a recruiting aspect. So you know we we got to keep getting good players. So to be able to get you know one of, if not the best player in the portal, yeah. you know, this yeah. cycle is, you know, a big gift for us, especially, you know, following up, getting, you know, yeah. one of, if not the best players out of the portal, you know, last week. Mm -hmm. So we just want to keep building, man. Well, hey, look, Coach uh, G, to be able to get both of these, I mean, they're the, they're the top two players in the portal. The question that I want to ask is, obviously, you bring back Angel. You have Flage there, obviously, and then also you have Kateri Poole and you have all the other players. How do you manage all these different personalities? And, I mean, let's be honest. They're bucket getters. They're they're, they're going to go score. We know what the what the stats are on Haley. We know what the stats are on Anissa. We know what the stats are on Angel. Uh, obviously, Flage Johnson, freshman of the year in the SEC. How are y'all able to manage all of these players, all of their skill sets, all of their personalities, and bring it all together to, be, to form a team for next season? I don't know, but Coach Mulkey will know how to do it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not worried about it. I'm I'm literally not worried about that part at all because we just had nine new players last year. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think that was the biggest question for a lot of people last year. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if it's going to keep being the big question or whatever, but – not worried about it. Coach Monkey is the greatest coach of all time. So wow. uh, I'm not worried about anything when it comes to managing personalities, yeah. Yeah. carving out roles, anything in between. I'm not worried about it. Like Coach Monkey is the best for that reason because she does such a masterful job at it on a daily basis. You yeah. know, kids will have their roles. Kids will have to sacrifice 
uh, all of them, every single yeah. person. Yeah. Like these kids came here to win. Like Anissa probably won't average 25 and 13 next year. Yeah. I hope she does, uh, but she probably won't. Like yeah. Haley's numbers will probably go down a little bit. You know, yeah. I hope they don't, but they probably will. Like Angel probably won't average 35 and 30 like she averaged. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she does, but she may not, you know, yeah, yeah. But it's just a part of it. Like, I think it's it's all for the greater good. Like these kids knew who we had coming back when they decided to come here. You know, Anissa knew who we had coming in when she decided to come here. So, you know. They understand it's a sacrifice and yeah. they came here to win. And if we're here to win, we're here to win. And, you know, it's not about it. Everyone has to like put aside personal egos yeah. and everyone is going to put aside personal egos or else. Coach <laughs> <laughs> Kim's going to make them do it, right? <laughs> yes, don't play that. So, so, so on that note, uh, uh, G, you, you know, you said, look, Kim Mulkey's got it. I'm not worried about it. On that note, you as a coach, personally, what is what is one thing you have learned under her? I, I mean, you just said that she's the greatest coach of all time. So, I mean, I'm sure there's a million things you could say. But what's the biggest thing you've learned as a coach from Kim? That every little detail matters. And not to let anything slide. She doesn't let anything slide. And I mean nothing. nothing. Like, there was one <laughs> game – that we played in, I feel like it was before like the Michigan game or something like that. Okay. And she always sits in the practice gym before she like comes into the coach's locker room because that's where she does her uh, pregame interviews. And she sent the staff, the staff group chat, she sent us a picture of a clock. She was holding a clock the clock from the wall in the practice gym. She sent us a picture of it. And all of us were like, and then she followed it up with the text. And she was like, so no, it was right after daylight saving. She was like, so nobody knew that this, this, the time on this clock was wrong. It's oh. been wrong for how long? And nobody noticed that I had to notice it. <laughs> I had to fix it. I had to take it down myself. We have all these coaches, all these managers, all this support staff. <laughs> And no wow. one could fix it. She was like, I guess I got to do everything. Wow. That's, uh, that's definitely. But it's like detail. that with everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the thing that, that yeah. I learned. Nothing is nothing is too big. Nothing is too small. Every little thing matters. And I, you know, when you work enough, like you've been around people who say it and you're around people who, you know, spit out the cute mantras and, and things like that, but she like lives it. She really, yeah. really lives that. It's not just coach speech. Oh no, 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 no. And she, you know, she has brought this program uh, to a place where, I mean, we y'all getting national recognition. Um, and obviously with everything that y'all have done and that, that the work that you've put in as well, uh, to bringing in these transfer portal players. And then obviously coming off a national championship game, you know, me and Reagan were just mentioning before you came on, you know, a couple of years ago, it was like, Hey, let's just get a winning season. Right. <laughs> and then, you know, and then yeah. after that, now it's like, okay, let's, let's, as Kim stated, you know, let's get past uh, round two. You know, we want to try and get past round two. Those are our expectations. But now things have changed a little bit. <laughs> You've won a <laughs> national championship. You've brought in the number one recruiting class in the nation, which is obviously kudos to y'all. You brought in the number one transfer portal class. The expectations, Coach G, they're going to be there now. They're 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 there now. So, how do you? How do the players? How do y'all manage those expectations? You embrace it. You embrace it. You come to work every day. Uh, I mean, we we have the talent to do it. I think we we've shown that. So. Now it's our job and, and the, the player's job to get in there and work every single day. Like, work like you're trying to go back to a Final Four and to a national championship game. Yeah, like, yeah. You have to do that every single day. Uh, we don't feel like every season is is national championship or bust, like, from here on out. That's not how we feel. I think that's unfair to, you know, our players. That's unfair to our fans, even though our fans don't care. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but – 
you know, that, that isn't fair to, to like push on our girls. It, it's yeah. not, but yeah. we have to give a national championship effort every single day. Like we aren't sneaking up on anybody anymore. I think we had the luxury of that for a little bit last year. Right. Uh, I mean, we aren't playing to, you know, be in the top four of the, the SEC tournament anymore. We aren't playing to make it to sweet 16s. We know that. Uh, but eventually this is what we wanted to get the program to. Uh, and fortunately, like Mulkey has dealt with these expectations for the last, what, 15, 20 years at Baylor. No doubt. So no she doubt. gets it. She gets it. Like, yeah. and, and I'm not worried about that part either. Like she'll manage those expectations Every single day, she'll make sure that, uh, you know, the girls are ready, that we're ready, that, that right. you know, us as a coaching staff are prepared to, you know, give out whatever message it is. And, yeah, all right. So we're excited. We're excited about it. Uh, it Coach the the – oh, go ahead, go ahead. It beats the alternative. It beats the alternative of, you know – trying to make the tournament or, right. yep. you know, hoping that you're in the top eight of the SEC or something like that. Like, I've been on the other side of it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th this beats that. So, speaking of the championship, I, I know you mentioned it, you know, a little bit the, and the expectations there. Um, so, you, maybe you've been asked about this. Maybe you haven't. I, I don't know. But I'm curious. I know – I feel like I see a lot of you and Angel kind of specifically ha have a have a great relationship, uh, you know, a, a kind-hearted relationship between each other. You know, when she flashed the ring finger and did the you can't see me, you know, it got a little bit of publicity. I, I don't know if you know <laughs> this or not. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. You know, and it became – controversial um which was ridiculous controversial um yeah. how did y'all handle you know internally that kind of scrutiny um and, and maybe with angel personally i mean how, how do you handle that which see she she just seemed to kind of be like yo this is me i don't care but you know I, I mean how, how does such public publicity like that and scrutiny because there were say, there were people saying some extremely in, inappropriate things and, and things that I feel like, I mean, people should have been fired for. Um, I mean, how do you handle that after such a, you know, moment like that in the championship? I mean, first thing, Angel had been talking trash all year, one. Right. Caitlin Clark had been talking trash all year, right? two. I mean, <laughs> so – not, none of that was a big deal to us. Like, we yeah. didn't even – like, we saw it all. We saw it all blowing up. But, mm -hmm. honestly, Angel didn't know any of those people. She saw them, like, saying stuff, and then it was going viral or whatever. Those girls grew up on social media. They know how to maneuver kind of through social media. Uh, sure, sure. I think Angel had become a bit of a, a social media star – as yeah. the year progressed. No question. Uh, yeah. So she learned how to kind of tune out the noise. Like she dealt with a lot of scrutiny after like the South Carolina game. And then again, after the Tennessee game, the only two games we got beat. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, she learned how to deal with it. She knew what it was. She wasn't worried about it. Uh, we were there to support her with whatever she needed. Uh, the university was there to support her uh, in our program as much as we need it and man it that was a blessing but it was what it was man we we didn't care anything about that i think we're we're loud enough on social media to yeah. where we're like yeah whatever whatever's coming bring it because we don't care like yeah yeah <laughs> we're trying to like build our program yeah. and build the you know spotlight around our program and everything like that so it is what it is. Awesome. Well, and, and I'm, and I'm yeah. glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that because, you know, I feel like it should be that way. I feel yeah. like some of this had to do with the fact that it was women's college basketball yes. rather than men's. Yes. Because uh, I feel like it wouldn't have been that big of an issue if it was like the men's Final Four or the men's championship. 
and it became a big issue. But it's like, man, they're just passionate about their game. Like, and, and they're out there winning a natty. Like, and you're upset she's flashing a ring and doing the same <laughs> celebration she just did. Like, exactly. what are we talking about here? Anyway, but it's casual know, people yeah. watching women's sports for the first time ever in yep. history, and they're for really sure. just watching clips on social media. So they have so much to say, uh, but everything is clickbait. And mm-hmm. I think Coach Mulkey did a really good job of preparing our girls for how the media was was going to treat them even before the season started because of how the media, you know, treats and portrays her. For sure. uh, so they joked about it all the time. And, you know, kind of when that time came, they just kind of let it fall off. That's the good show. to hear. That's good it. to hear. Well, you, you mentioned social media, and obviously, uh, as you talked with Corey Diaz, uh, he, he shared some uh, some tweets today, some quotes uh, from y'all's conversation. You said that social media was uh, the evolution of recruiting, uh, and it's the evolution of uh, of these players. Wh- how what is that approach for you in recruiting? Obviously, you have played a major major role in recruiting and in the transfer portal, getting these players to come to LSU. So how do, how do you approach recruiting? Uh, obviously, as you mentioned, social media plays a big role. So kind of give us some insight into that. Uh, these kids are on social media. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, so you talk to them so much on the phone. You talk to them so much via text message. You talk to their parents. You talk to their coaches. But they see the things that you're saying. Yeah. So yeah. if you're trying to get a point across – you can use social media to do that without having to talk to them directly. You can use right. social media to talk to seven different recruits at once. Yep. And all of them think that you're just talking to them. Like, and it makes them feel special. And you could be talking to, you know, one of them or all of them. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So I, I think that it's just a tool to be able to like broaden your scope. And, and really just be able to, to use effective communication if you use it the right way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a lot of coaches get caught up in kind of wanting to, I think, negative recruit in a way. Yeah. And it makes them look kind of corny. And it makes yeah. them look kind of lame at times when they could just sell what they sell. Use social media in a way to, to kind of sell what you sell. Like social media for us, uh, we had the official visit with, you know, the, the big official visit for the high school kids with, you know, Michaela, Del Rosario, and Velez. And somebody started the ADR to BTR for Aaliyah Del Rosario. And mm-hmm. it was a hit. And it yeah. went crazy. Yeah. And it was other coaches who were like, more than a, you're more than a hat. They tweeted, you're more than a hashtag to us. Oh, boy. <laughs> and the kids looked at it and they like, that's Y'all like, like, that's hey, us. like <laughs> let me get my let me get my like glory for a moment yeah yeah instead yeah. of you kind of butting in trying to make it about you and trying to make it a recruiting point for you yeah uh i think coaches like we can simmer down a little bit sometimes and i think that's the thing i think because i've been using social media like to recruit mm-hmm. since i started coaching and i was able to fail kind of away from it's even weird to say the spotlight now but people see everything I tweet now like they they yeah. see it but they didn't see it when I was at a division 2 school you get what I'm saying like they right. didn't really even see it the entire time I was at Vanderbilt yeah. you know because the fan base wasn't as big like my name wasn't as big so yeah. I got to mess up and I got to like tinker with it a little bit and now I feel like it's like Perfect. You got it on the, <laughs> you got it on the point now. You got it down bad. Yeah, I got it. So w- one last question for you, you Gary, uh, uh, to wrap things up here. We appreciate you joining in again uh, and taking time to do this. Um, so LSU aside for a second, LSU aside, I wanted to ask about Gary, and we, we do this with all of our guests. Uh, number one, so I guess it's kind of a twofold, twofold uh, question here. Number one, what are your personal goals as a coach? Your own personal goals as a coach. Number two, when you're not coaching and when you're not on the phone recruiting, <laughs> what's a personal hobby of yours? Uh, my personal goals as a coach, I have some personal goals while I'm here, and I have some personal goals uh, 
like for just me. Yeah. While I'm here, I re- I want to sign back to back number one recruiting classes. That's really important to me. I wanted to sign back to back uh number one like kids in the portal. Like yeah, that's definitely. what I wanted to do. Check that one off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I want to sign back to back number one recruiting classes. Uh, I want to help Mulkey win win back to back titles. She's never done that. Yeah. So while I'm here, I want to help her do that. Uh, and I wanted to get to three. I wanted to get to three here. She got three at Baylor. I wanted to get three here. Like those are my personal goals for while I'm at LSU. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. In addition to learning and everything like that, but things that you can put like a dollar figure on, I guess you want to say. Sure. Yeah. Like those are are my personal goals. But my personal goals just as an individual individual coach. Uh, I want to be a head coach. I, I want to be a head coach someday. That's why I'm here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want this to be my last assistant coach and stop. Yeah. And I just want to soak up as much as I can from Coach Mulkey. I want to learn as much as I can from Coach Mulkey and Coach Starkey and everyone else on the staff yeah. and just learn what it looks like to to be be and run a successful program. Uh, that's what I want to do. Uh, that's, I think my main goal that that's my, my number one goal left when it comes to, to coaching, uh, my hobbies kind of outside of coaching and recruiting and all that. I, I, I scroll my phone. Like that's all I do. (laughs) That's literally all I do. I'm on my phone all the time. I have two little kids though. Uh, I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Okay. Uh, so playing with them, running around with them, especially Absolutely. my three-year-old son, like Absolutely. he's really into basketball. Uh, so we sit around and we shoot basketball and, and we watch like he loves highlights. Uh, yeah, He loves watching the LSU games, but now he's really in the NBA. Uh, he's learning their names. Uh, he hey. loves watching the games. Uh, so really just sitting around playing with my son, like yeah. I, I always, 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 like one of the son, I remember how it was growing up with my dad. So Absolutely. like that's, that's something that I always wanted to do. So whether it's scrolling on my phone and when I scroll, I'm kind of working when I scroll too, but yeah. uh, yeah, playing with my son, playing with my family, like kicking it with my wife. Uh, yeah. We, we have our hands full with these kids. <laughs> so I've- you know, I hear you, just, man. it's really just family time and work. That's really yeah. all I do. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. I actually have two sons myself. One is four. Um, and I actually have a one month old. So Ooh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> long, Ooh. long nights at times, long nights at times. So <laughs> I'm lucky. Uh, I don't have to deal with that. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, I, I really, I, you know, as a father of a four year old, that that really blesses my heart to, to hear you say that. Um, I really appreciate that. Gary, Gary Reedus. Appreciate your Reedus. time here. Reedus. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Coach G, hey, man. And Coach G. As we, Coach G, 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 whatever. Yeah. Just G, whatever. Portal King. Whatever. Portal King. <laughs> hey, hey. Portal King. <laughs> there it is. There Portal it is. King. There it is. Gary, hey, man, we really appreciate you taking your time to do this. You've been a fantastic interview, and we, we appreciate all your insight to the program. And, man, we wish you the best of luck here at LSU. Obviously, we want to see back-to-back titles, maybe back-to-back-to-back. That way you can get your head coaching job. Uh, and, and you can check all the boxes and roll on. Yeah. Um, but, man, we wish the best of luck to you here at LSU and also in, in your future career. Uh, um, we, we want to see you succeed because you've been such a great piece here at LSU the last two, two years. So appreciate you. your interview time, man, and, and your time. I hope you have a good night, man. For sure. Appreciate you guys having me on. Go Tigers. Go Tigers, man. Go Tigers. Hey, man. Thank you, sir. All right. All right, guys. I mean, what a fantastic interview, Zach. Um, so, Zach, little little baseball game update coming right off of the the interview here. Um, the very first pitch of the game hit Gavin Dugas. <laughs> and <laughs> I know, we were just tell you, bro. About that. <laughs> hey, that's five. Five straight games. Five <laughs> straight games that he's been hit by a pitch. And then Trey he's a magnet. He's a magnet. Trey Morgan hits an absolute nuke, nuke to right field. I, gotta, I mean, I gotta, that's the I longest hit home run I think yet. he's hit all year. I don't I think mean, they had the video yet. I mean, that was a moonshot. Uh, I, I guess Paul's pitching now. Paul currently is pitching. Yes, they got two outs and a guy on second base. 
Um, they, they got a base hit. The first guy got a base hit, and then they moved him over on a ground ball. Um, so two outs, one, two count, guy on first, second base. All right, guys, Zach, um, do we have any comments we need to address? We oh, gosh. Uh, I know there was a lot, a lot of comments flying in. We were, we were discussing things. So. Urban Gold said, is LSU done in the portal? I'm assuming, obviously, I, I would assume women. so, yeah. I would just get his first K of the night. Oh, so we're going yeah. to the top of the second. Yeah, go to the top of the second. He gets Let's his first go. K of the night. Let's go. How many pitches? How many pitches are we at? Uh, it just clicked off. I, I don't know. It, it was okay. it was less than twenty. So okay, good, good, good. Uh, I would say, uh, Perp, uh, that they are nearing uh, the end of this portal run here. Yeah. Uh, obviously, with the two that you've added, um, if they do, I, you know, it's going to be again as we've mentioned some some depth pieces. I, yeah. I believe, uh, I believe you have pretty much solidified uh, who is who is going to be uh, your starting five, uh, and that is going to be Angel Reese. Uh, Moro, Haley Van Lith, Flage Johnson, and then I think you're going to see either Kateri Poole or Michaela Williams be that other guard spot. Uh, so anybody else you add, if they do add, uh, I believe is going to be some depth pieces. I honestly, Reagan, I don't know if they will add any more. Yeah, yeah, I, I think they're done. I think they're done. Which, uh, I mean, hey, to be able to add the top two and then say, we yeah, did. that's all you need. That's all you need. <laughs> I'm good with it. Good I ain't with complaining. It, good with it. I ain't complaining at all. All right, let's see what else. Uh, great job, Coach, uh, from Abby. Uh, let's see who else we got in here. Perp said, great interview, fellas. We appreciate that. Uh, Justin said, don't sleep on MK. But I'm telling you, man, no it's, I, I think it's going to be no. between Kateri and MK uh, for that other starting spot. Yeah. I, I believe yeah. the other four are pretty solidified. But we're gonna see uh, Ryan in here. He said the Mulky Way. Hey, if y'all don't listen, we're the ones that started it back in the day. Okay, we called it the Mulky Makeover, and man, <laughs> she, has, she has done a complete makeover of uh, yeah. this program. And no uh, man, it's exciting to think about. It's exciting to think about what's what's going on with all of basketball and what. Uh, is potentially to come, you know, maybe some renovations, maybe some something happened with the PMAC. Yeah, we don't yeah. know yet. Um, obviously, that's been discussed and talked about, and obviously, Kim has has mentioned that a lot. Uh, Ryan says, "Court Court of Queens." I like that. Yeah. I yeah. like that a lot. The that's, court that's of awesome. Queens. Uh, Robert said, "When is the Coach Gary? When is the Portal King statue going to be made? Uh, go <laughs> ahead and make it. Go ahead and Build make it. it. Dream Chaser, it. It. Anissa." Uh, Super team, Justin Broussard, uh, Chelsea. She was the first one in here to comment. Appreciate you, Chelsea, joining. If you're still Moreau. with us, said, let's go, Moreau. I Moreau. love, I love, I love the spelling in that one. I love the spelling. Okay, Reagan, I think we've about wrapped it up. Yeah, we need to hit, we need to hit our final break, and then we'll. Or, or no, we've already hit two breaks, haven't we? We've already hit our break. We can okay. wrap it up. Here. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, LSU's in the top of the second uh, um, of the game. It's already two to nothing. LSU happened really quick. It was two to nothing on three pitches. Three pitches. It was two to nothing. Three pitches. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan Thompson's up to bat. He's got a two-one count on him. I uh, hope y'all enjoy the rest of the night, and hopefully the Tigers will get a series opener W um, here in the Plains against Auburn. Appreciate all y'all coming in and interacting. Uh, we once again thank you to Gary uh, and him coming on here, willing to do that. Uh, that was a fantastic interview. Y'all have a great night. We'll see you next time here in the Tigers Avenue. Bye, Star Hero. Take us out. Peace. Who that, 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 who that